So today I speak to Austin from VLight. Now Austin has been involved with this company for a very long time and knows his stuff. I was fortunate enough to sit down with him at PBM 2024 in London. We went through not only their new products coming out, but also some of the science around photobiomodulation, red light therapy, and its effect on the brain. Let's get into it. All right, Austin, let's just dive straight into it. Okay. These are obviously designed for the head, for the brain, right? Yep. How and why? Why are they designed the way they are? Why would someone want to use one of these instead of just, say, standing in front of the high-powered red light therapy pedal? Yeah. Uh, so it's a really common question we get. We get that all the time. So number one, I would say, is we target the default mode network of the brain, uh, which is like a region in the front. We have three in the back, one near the cerebellum, and then we have an intranasal light. Um, so the benefits of targeting the default mode network, and for people who don't know what it is, it's a uh, regions of the brain specific areas of unconscious thought so it's like subconscious processing that's happening um the original design of it is because alzheimer's disease is typically associated with a like a the connectivity um in the default mode network is like lower so by stimulating the default mode network the idea is that you're targeting the brains where you're deficient in alzheimer's and the goal is then to be able to help that um so what we found though is that not only Alzheimer's is helping with different uh, disorders. So we have about 20 published studies in different spaces. Uh, Parkinson's disease, autism, traumatic brain injury, uh, dementia, PTSD. And so by targeting the default mode network, um, you're able to then target areas of the brain that's very specific. Uh, so another key factor is irradiance. Um, so the distance you are away from that LED panel is very important. And so you want the LEDs to be very close to the brain. Uh, if you move, for example, one centimeter off versus one inch off, it's an exponential difference in how much light actually gets through to you. Uh, so you'd want them to be touching. And then the intranasal is the other key part. So with the intranasal applicator, what you're doing is getting to the deeper parts of the brain that you wouldn't be able to get to through the cortex. And so that's one of our patented technology is the uh, intranasal. And for those that haven't uh, haven't seen my videos or haven't been on your website, yeah, do you, do you just want to show them oh, what yeah. the intranasal is? Um, Take a look at any of those, yeah. So we have a device called the MIP, and the MIP has four different intranasals to it. So we have a 470 nanometer, 633, 655, and an 810. The 470 is a blue light, the 633 is a red LED, um, the 655 is a red laser, and the 810 is a near-infrared light. So they all have their different properties to them, different functions to them, depending on what it is you want to achieve. Um, so you can see it here. We could turn it on. And they simply go into your nose. These go sorry, straight into the nose. You can use two at once if you wanted to. Cool. The blue is more for uh, sanitization, for uh, like immune support, antimicrobial properties. The near infrared is for brain stimulation. Mm. The 633 and 655 is for like systemic circulation. And so people use them for different applications. So we, the, the thing about the new A10 is that the new A10 intranasal allows you to change the pulse frequency. Uh, before, we used to only have it at one pulse frequency. Uh, and so the way it works is you hold it, you press down on the button, you'll hear it beep. And then it changes the frequency of that. So now we have alpha and gamma in just the intranasal on its own too. Uh, the, that just pulses the near infrared, not the blue, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've totally got to get one of these, uh, these blue ones. Uh, the amount of colds and bugs I catch from my kids. Yeah, I need that for the immune support. Right. I, I want to go back uh, a few steps here. Back to yeah, the headset. What do you call these headsets? Uh, I mean, yeah, we call it the headset. Yeah, we have the intranasal. We call them the diodes, the lights, LEDs. Okay. Uh, yeah. So all right. So comparing the headsets to a panel. So firstly, you've got the contact, right? You've yep. got that on this on the head. Correct. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to that one as well. Yeah. I've got a few little questions there, but the default, default mode network. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you want to get light into that particular area. I get that. Right. Correct. Why though, could you not just saturate the whole head and hit yeah. that area plus other areas? It's a really good question. Um, so there's a few reasons that we don't do that. And I'll first say that what we need to have is a study comparing full brain simulation versus this in a very controlled fashion and see the differences. Um, right now, there's just mainly theories of like why one is better than the other. Uh, and some of the reasons for it is when you have full brain stimulation, uh, like one of the main mechanisms of brain stimulation with light 
is uh, causing a, a release of a reactive oxygen species, so ROS. Um, the theory is that if you're stimulating with full brain stimulation, it's causing that throughout the entire brain, and it's kind of overwhelming the brain with that. So by targeting in only very specific regions, you're not uh, kind of flooding the brain with that ROS. Uh, so that's one, one reason. The other reason is the amount of heat that's being produced. Um, so we have it in a, a factor where there's gaps in between, and by stimulating with gaps in between, the heat can then dissipate outwards. Um, so that's another reason. So I would say that depending on what it is you're trying to achieve, um, targeted stimulation is probably going to be better uh, because we know that different functions and different things that you do respond to better to functional networks in the brain. Uh, that kind of leads me on to this device, which is the NeuroPro 2. So the NeuroPro 2 is a device that has 10 LEDs on the headset. It has um, two intranasals. And so that's just the hardware difference. The main difference is the software. So all these independent LEDs, you can independently control them. So for example, if you want the default mode network on, you can turn on this one, these, and turn off the rest. If you want the salience network on, you can turn on these three, those three. And any combination, it's fully customizable. So by targeting those specific different networks, you're going to achieve different things. So then if someone, if someone was suffering from a, a cognitive decline in the shin or brain trauma, uh, yeah, like TBI, something like that, do you then, and, and they went off to something like the pro, do you then like give them protocols, like use this setting for this time? So like, do you map it all out? Do you make it easy for them or? So what we do is we give a general recommendation. Yeah. Our product's a, a low risk general wellness device. So we're not approved for any Got conditions it. like that. But what we do is uh, we say, hey, there's studies that's out there. There's a study that was done in traumatic brain injury. This is the protocol. Mm -hmm. And then people try the protocol that was used in the study. Okay. And the typical protocols for that is based on this device, which is our alpha or gamma. And so they'll use like different protocols. Sometimes it's like every other day. Sometimes it's six days a week, typically a period of eight to 12 weeks. And they'll kind of mimic the protocol that we used in that study. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that with the pro device, it's possible that there is a more ideal, a more optimal protocol, but there's just not enough research right now to say this is better than that or this is better than that. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now going back to the contact, the you know how you were saying yeah. the LEDs are right on the on the head. Yeah. And I get that. Um, there's no loss of light, or right. loss of energy. You're not having to shine the light through through here especially yeah. if someone's got a lot of hair because you can you know part the hair and get it right on yep. the skull but let, uh, how, what's what's the power density of of the leds uh so it's around 100 milliwatts per cent oh. screen. okay crazy yeah. that's that's quite high so hey sorry to interrupt what is a fascinating conversation i just wanted to say if you are enjoying this can you just give me a quick press on the like button subscribe if you want to see more interviews like this i did eight interviews from PBM 2024. So there's a bunch more content like this that will be coming out. So hit subscribe if you want to be notified when those go live. Let's say someone was using, I don't know, a, a panel or a laser or, or, or a handheld device. Yeah. That, and they measured it. And it, even with that gap, even with that distance, you were still getting about 100 milliwatts on the head. Yeah. Does that then make the contact uh, benefits that your product has uh, redundant? Um, I would say it's not redundant um, because th that's just on the head itself. Uh, the key is the combination of what we have with the intranasal. And what we see is if you combine, uh, or sorry, if you compare intranasal plus transcranial to just transcranial, it's completely different. And you're seeing a more profound, more pronounced uh, result. And yeah, w once you have that, I would say that you you may get similar effects um, with the just transcranial alone, but it's significantly different once you combine it with the intranasal. Yeah, and I think, look, I mean, I'm asking these questions because I know the yeah. community asked me. Uh, yeah. But if I was suffering from one of these conditions, I mean, you have a product here that is specifically designed for these sort of problems, right? I mean, it, it's it's done for you. You know what I mean? And yeah, you could try and hack the system and, and use a panel and then, but yeah. it's going to be completely different because yeah, you may get a hundred milliwatts. If you get the panel all right, three inches away, you may get a hundred milliwatt, milliwatts here, Correct. but it's going to be, it's not going to be on this side. It's not going to be on the top. You know, you got all sorts of distances going on. Yes. Um, whereas this is built for that purpose. So exactly. And you can move around with it or, you know, read a book and stuff and you're not tied to a, a panel. 
So I, I get all that. And um, again, it's just because I know these questions come through. Yeah. And uh, another um, thing I would like to add to that is the way our LEDs are and the way that the light disperses, there's different ways that light can disperse. So it can disperse kind of outwards and just kind of spread everywhere, or it could be a bit more focused. So a key part of our technology is not just the light itself, but it's this uh, casing on it, which kind of focuses the light in specific regions. Uh, so that's also a huge difference between this and uh, just if you're to use any other thing, um, the way the light is focused on that region is very important. So you may be getting it touching at that power, but then it, the way it focuses is a key part of it as well. Yeah, totally. Okay, so this is the fourth generation Geoff. Geoff, yeah. So I, until 10 minutes ago, I hadn't seen it. Yeah. Um, tell me, what what's new? How's it improved? Yeah. Um, so number one, I would say is the comfort. Um, the, a lot of issues that we had uh, is ha having to deal with comfort. So it's a lot more flexible. It's a lot more comfortable on the head. It has adjustable straps for different head sizes. Uh, you can have a Velcro if you have a very small head or a larger head. Uh, we have a softer intranasal. So one complaint that we would have got before was uh, just a little bit of pinching on the nose. We have a softer intranasal. So it's very, very comfortable for most people. Uh, we have a, a different type of steel band on it, so it's a lot more um, comfortable on the head itself, but it's not pressing as hard, and so it kind of just sits there and adjusts really well. Yeah, are all the LEDs in contact with my head right now? They are. Man, this, this is way different. Yeah. Okay, so I've, I'm quite surprised because uh, I recently finished my review of this same product, the third generation product, and yet, I have to admit, it was never the most pleasant thing to put on yeah. or wear because you felt you felt the pressure yep. in one or two areas. And even adjusting it, uh, it was like, yeah, seriously, I'd, I'd get my phone or a mirror and be like, you know, get it all sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a, a lot nicer there. Yeah. Yes. And sorry if you already answered this, but there's two more, or oh, there's one more LED? Yes, yeah. Is it just a single LED or is it a whole cluster bit? Uh, so it's a single LED and so it's targeting the cerebellum. So previously we had a separate device called the X Plus and people would have to purchase two devices. What we did for this version four is we combined both of them together. So then for the same price, you're getting both uh, the cerebellum simulation and the default bone network stimulation. Uh, so typically a lot of people with uh, issues like Parkinson's, they appreciate that cerebellum simulation because typically Parkinson's is associated with uh, deficiencies there. And uh, what about from a technology point of view? Has anything changed internally, like power output? I mean, we've got a new controller here, but... Um, in terms of the technology itself, the LEDs and the power output, uh, I think we have our kind of secret sauce that we have our special uh, arrangement. And it's been working for us. We didn't change anything with that. The main changes has been the addition of the new LED the comfort of it, and then um, just the aesthetic of it as well. Yeah, and, and being able to, these new buttons in the controller, obviously all. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, very cool. And then, so what about the Pro? Is this yeah. out yet? So the Pro, we're hoping to have this released by the end of the month, probably early fall by the latest. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a very highly anticipated device. Uh, the NeuroPro 1 was very successful and very in demand. We had a lot of people, meditators, biohackers, neurofeedback practitioners, um, they're loving it and they're loving the capabilities of this. Um, this is a device where you have to have some sort of baseline understanding to know how to best customize it. Um, so we have biohackers, neurofeedback practitioners using it in specific ways. But once you know how to use it, the device, the possibilities are limitless with this. I'm assuming this is your most popular product. Yes. Yeah. And if someone comes to you, nothing super serious, they're just, you know, getting a little bit older, maybe family history of, of uh, brain uh, condition. Yeah. Do you, do you, what, do you just ask them their budget and go from there or are you kind of steering them no. to the joy? Um, it, it depends on the person. So it depends on what their specific needs are. Um, it depends on how they intend to use it. So a lot of people, for example, they'll keep an intranasal on their car. They drive to work. It's uh you know, half hour to work, half hour back. So they'll use a gamma intranasal in the morning and an alpha intranasal in the night. Um, some people, they need a little bit more stimulation. So it really just depends on the person. Uh, one thing we offer too is uh, like a exchange policy. So if, if you don't like the device within six months, we give 80% back. So sometimes people will try the device, they'll try intranasal and they'll say, hey, I, I like this, but I want a bit more. They'll then upgrade to the, to the duo. They'll try the alpha and gamma and vice versa. So it depends on them. Uh, we have a team of PhD scientists. We have about seven researchers on staff. And so if people have very specific questions or they have any 
Uh, if they need any recommendations, we're then able to recommend them that way too. Yeah, and you you have a really good website as well. There's a lot of great uh, resources over there. Um, so where can people go to find out more about, you know, find that research and find out uh, more about the products? Yeah, so just vlight.com. That's where all of our research is. There's a science tab on there where you can read about all our science. Uh, what we're doing now is getting a lot of YouTube content out there. So the vlight Inc. YouTube channel. Um, if you just search on YouTube, YouTube, you'll find it there. And yeah, we're tra- what we're trying to do now is just break down this very complex science and bring it down to the understanding of a common person. So that's uh, our goal and that's what we're trying to do. And I, I think the amount of research that we have coming out every month, uh, it's just tons and tons of research coming out. It's, it's amazing where this is going to be going. Austin, thank you very much. Pleasure. Great meeting you. And uh, yeah, I was excited to get this out for everyone. Um, love what you're doing. The new generation uh, headsets uh, much nicer. So uh, I might have to um, have a play myself. So thanks again. You're welcome. And that is a wrap. I'm eager to know what was your highlight of this conversation? I'll leave a comment down below. Also, jump over to our Facebook group. We have over 10,000 people in there. So you can talk about it over there. And head over to lighttherapyinsiders.com. There's a really good blog article over there with a shopping tool. Lots of good stuff. And um, there's lots of good stuff, hopefully, on this YouTube channel of mine. So Lots to check out. There's a video up here that you probably will like as well. It's a really good interview. Otherwise, uh, say hello down below and I'll get back to you soon.